Greetings, Pastor Chris with you for another midweek Bible devotional. I hope you're doing well in the Lord today. And you know, I always seem to say that, right? I hope you're doing well in the Lord today. Well, for us to be in the Lord is what it's all about. So again, I hope you're doing well in the Lord today and you're bringing all your cares and your burdens and presenting them to him. Um, this week, we're going to look at uh, one of the, actually probably the most ancient document contained in the Bible, and that would be the book of Job. Uh, so we'll be spending some time in Job. So um, if you haven't done it already, uh, stop the video, go grab your Bible, uh, and, or open it up on your phone or your tablet, your computer, whatever you're using. But of course, me, I like to use a good old-fashioned print Bible. <laughs> um, I'll be in the uh, ESV version for this, this week's devotional. So if you want to have one of those in front of you, uh, that'll probably be a little easier for you to follow along. Um, if not, you can use whatever translation you're comfortable with, and um, you'll, you'll still get the, 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 the gist of the message. So we're looking at Job. Um, again, it's, it's probably, like I said, the most ancient book in Scripture. We know the story. Um, Job was basically a guy that had it all. Uh, he had much wealth, he had a family, he had children. All was going well for Job. But uh, Satan came along, and, and God actually allowed Satan to afflict Job. And essentially, Job lost everything. He lost his wealth, he lost his children, he lost everything. He lost his physical health. He was uh, covered like in boils and welts, and he really, really had a really rough go. God never gave him a reason why. <laughs> Even you read the whole book, God never told him why. Um, we know the story, like I said, um, he, uh, Job uh, is visited by three friends who listen to him complain, to listen to him just in a long, elongated way, ask why. What did I do to deserve this? I didn't do anything to deserve this. And the friends gave him, I would always characterize it as... Um, unwise counsel. <laughs> I, I don't think it was really really that wise uh, advice that they gave him. Uh, but there's truth in it. There is truth in it for us to, to glean. I mean, look, it's, it's, it's kept in Scripture for us, so it's all there for a reason. Um, but again, like I said, he never, he always wants his day in court with God, and when he finally gets it, we know it didn't turn out all that well. But at the very end, um, He's blessed you know, twofold, uh, every, uh, incredibly blessed. So, so that's the whole story in a nutshell. But in the middle of the story, actually toward the end of the story, maybe the, the second half of the story, a younger man comes along, um, Elihu. Um, he comes into the story and he chastises all of them, including Job. And um, in what he says, he, um, he offers, I would say, more of the correct counsel. Uh, he looks to realign them. Uh, with the way things should be. So, so that's, that's where we find ourselves for this week's devotional. We're in um, Job 33. We're in the 33rd chapter of Job, and we'll, beginning, we'll be beginning in verse 23. So Job 33, verse 23, and we're going to read to verse 28. Okay, Job 33, 23 through 28. This is the word of the Lord. If there be for him an angel a mediator, one of the thousand, to declare to man what is right for him. And he is merciful to him and says, Deliver him from going into the pit. I have found a ransom. Let his flesh become fresh with youth. Let him return to the days of his youthful vigor. Then man prays to God, and he accepts him. He sees his face with a shout of joy, and he restores to man his righteousness." He sings before men and says, I sinned and perverted what was right, and it was not repaid to me. He has redeemed my soul from going down into the pit, and my life shall look upon the light. There's a uh, wonderful example here of the gospel in the Old Testament. And this, of course, is a very ancient document, so this is like probably one of the earliest um, written forms of the redemptive plan of God for mankind. And it, of course, it's found in none other than Christ Jesus. So, so let's just kind of walk through this passage, and, and you'll see what I'm talking about. The angel, one of a thousand, uh, it, it, it tells us that it's a unique messenger, a unique person, a unique heaven-sent, one of a kind. Okay, that's really what this is talking about, the, the language that's being used. But notice the next word, the word that's in the middle there, a mediator. A mediator. So this angel, right? This angel is a mediator. First Timothy 2.5, for there is one God and there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. 
So first verse in this passage, who do we see Christ Jesus in the first verse? <laughs> He's unique. He is unique. He's the only one. He's the, he is the Son of God. There's no others. All men have to come to God through Jesus Christ. There's no other name under which you're saved. The only mediator. So again, first verse, we see Jesus Christ. Now what happens? So in verse 23, the end of it says, to declare to man what is right for him. So to declare to this, this generic man that Elihu is using, right? To declare what is right, to, to show, the, the idea of declaring what is right is to show the unrighteousness of mankind by showing his perfect righteousness. Now, if we're talking about Jesus, well, of course, his righteousness is perfect. He is God, so therefore his righteousness is perfect. So first, the very first verse, completely we see we're talking about Jesus. Now we go to the next verse. He says, and he is merciful to him. He being Christ is merciful to him, this generic man. He's merciful to him. And he says, deliver him from going into the pit. I have found a ransom. Now this language should start to sound familiar to you, right? Um, the ransom, there's, there's a bunch of verses in the New Testament speaking of this, but I'll take one of them. Uh, Mark 10, 45, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. And there's other quotes and other verses that talk about the same thing. But if you take that, he gave his life as a ransom for many, and you juxtapose that at the end of John 3.16, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The ransom. Jesus is the ransom that's talked about here in verse 24 in Job. In verse 25, let his flesh become fresh with youth, let him return to the days of his youthful vigor. Yea, let him be born again. Let him be born anew. Let him have freshness of life, newness of life, filled with the Spirit of God, filled with the Holy Spirit. So that, in my mind, that speaks of, of being born again, reborn. Your spirit has come to life. Your spirit, it's, it's, it's this youthful idea is what comes into mind when you think about uh, being born again. Verse 26 then man prays to God and he accepts him. He sees his face with a shout of joy. A little confusing in the language there. Um, I believe that it's saying the man prays to God and God accepts him. He sees his face with a shout of joy. You kind of look at where the pronouns, what, what's closer to the most recent reference. That's really kind of how we start trying to unpack this. But I, the way I see this, it's like when we recognize that Jesus is our ransom, then we recognize our sinfulness and, and, and he has shown us what his righteousness is and our unrighteousness is. When we come to God, we come to him, we beseech him for mercy, don't we not? When we, for that whole first experience with God, we're beseeching him for mercy and God accepts us. Um, Romans 5.10, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God. I see that reconciliation and acceptance kind of on a similar platform here. We reconcile to God by the death of his son. Much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. And there's great joy. There's great joy in the heart of the believer who has now been redeemed and reconciled to God. There's great joy in heaven as the angels rejoice because one sinner has turned and repented and turned toward God. And also, we think of this. It, speaking of Christ, it said, for the joy set before him... He endured the cross. Well, what was that joy? The redemption and salvation of the church. So there's a lot of joy to go around. So that's uh, 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 verse uh, 26. And the end of verse 26, it says, and he restores to man his righteousness. Now, who can do that? That's only God that can do that. Right? So, and God restores to man his righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, for our sake... He made him, Jesus, to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. He restores to man his righteousness. We become the righteousness of God. So again, there's that thread, the gospel flowing through this, this whole passage in Job. I think, too, if we, we can kind of tie in the, the idea from Philippians 3.9 that righteousness comes from Christ, and that righteousness depends on faith. So all of this just, again, just this, it all ties together. I'm, I'm really excited over this because I think it's a really awesome 
awesome passage. <laughs> okay, verse 27. He sings before men. Now I think he's talking about the man again, the generic man. Uh, he sings before men and says, I sinned and perverted what was right, and it was not repaid to me. We've sinned, we've fallen short of the glory of God, but Jesus took that sin upon himself and it was all nailed to the cross. So it was not repaid to me. What, what we are due, Jesus took the wrath of God for us. We're, 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 we're due to receive, he took it for us. So, so again, it was not repaid to us. And doesn't that give us cause to sing and to worship and to praise him and to thank him for his mercy and his grace upon us? Uh, the last verse we look at is, uh, He has redeemed my soul from going down into the pit, and my life shall look upon the light. There, in my mind, is, is the whole thing just summed up in a nutshell. He redeemed my soul. We talked about, talk about redemption a bit earlier, right? He redeemed my soul from going down into the pit, and my life shall look upon the light. What light are we talking about? No, oh, Jesus Christ, of course, I am the light of the world. That is the light we will look upon. There were his, where we'll be in a place in the new heavens, new earth, where there will need no need for sun because his glory will be the light. So, so that's the light we'll see. So here we are. We're in Job 33, 23 to 28, and we see the gospel of Jesus Christ clear as day, clearly presented to us. So um, I hope... Um, that you saw that, <laughs> and, and I hope that uh, uh, it was encouraging to you. Was, you can see it really was, it's very uplifting to me. Um, I love this, this passage. I, I, it's funny, when I was coming up with what I wanted to do this devotional on, I was, I was doing my daily devotions in my, my regular study Bible I use for that, and um, I came across this passage. I had it marked, and I just put gospel in Job. So I was like, you know, I got to share that with everybody. So, so that's it. That's what I see there. And I hope you do too. Leave, leave some comments below and let me know uh, if this, this kind of spoke into you or, or maybe I completely missed the point. <laughs> but in my mind, we see passages like this and I, I think this is, this is pretty clear. Um, so we can come away from this. To, we, should, we should be encouraged. We should be greatly encouraged because this is the, the redemptive plan of God recorded centuries before Jesus came. And here it is right in his word. Um, it should build us up. It should build us up, knowing that God never changes. He's the same yesterday, tomorrow, and forever. So that same God that made those promises, fulfilled those promises through Christ, and now we, the promises are that we who believe in him as the Son of God and re repent of our sin and turn to him, we have the assurance of these same promises. We will look upon that glorious light. So let, let this all just kind of settle upon you. That, that, that's, that's all I can say about it. Just, just let it settle upon you. So, hey, let me pray for us. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your mercy and your grace. Um, and we look forward to the day where because you redeemed us um, and you mediate on our behalf, that uh, we will be able to look upon you in glory. What, what a wonderful, wonderful uh, promise and assurance this is. And uh, I pray this for all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. So again, I hope this was edifying and, and building you up and encouraging for you. Um, at the same time, as always, I invite those who happen to come across this video on YouTube, um, like and subscribe. It's the first thing you do whenever you see a new YouTube video. That way uh, you'll get new notifications of when we put new devotionals up or anything else. The only thing else is um, that the church uh, that I pastor is Christ Community Church in Collinsville, Connecticut. And if you're in the Collinsville, Connecticut area, you're invited to come worship with us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. We would love to see you there. Um, if you heard about the church through the video, make sure you come see me at the end of the service and let me know. <laughs> so I know that I met somebody through the YouTube channel. Um, if you're not in the Collinsville, Connecticut area um, and um, you, you don't have a home church, uh, we live stream our service. So you can check that out on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Um, the easiest way to get to it is just go to our website, ChristCommunityChurchCT.org. Don't forget the CT, ChristCommunityChurchCT.org. Uh, on Sunday mornings, we have a link there. You can go right to that. It'll take you to the YouTube channel, and then you can watch our live stream. That stays up uh, after, the, um, after the service is over. The video is still there, so you can uh, go back and watch it anytime you want. And, of course, those of you that are watching this that are, um, uh, belong to our church in Collinsville and um, Lord willing, we'll see you Sunday morning at 10 a.m. So, so again, I hope this was all encouraging to all of you. And um, yeah, just stay in prayer, stay in the spirit, 
keep your eyes focused upon the cross. And until the next time we meet, be a blessing.